Today we will talk about edema. Edema is basically the collection of excess fluid in the body tissues. Suppose for example, is the human heart, it is pumping blood to the tissues and inside the tissues if there is collection of excess fluid, normally there is some fluid but if there is collection of excess fluid, then this condition is known as edema. Edema has a lot of classification and a lot of types but from physiology point of view, we have classified edema mainly into intracellular edema and extracellular edema. In this lecture, we will talk about intracellular edema. In the next lecture, we will discuss extracellular edema. Now, what are basically the uh, the causes of intracellular edema and what basically is the, uh, the intracellular edema? So, suppose for example, this is a human body. Here is the heart. Heart is basically pumping blood, the oxygenated blood into the aorta. And from the aorta, the blood is pumped into the arteries, arterioles and through different capillaries, it basically reaches the different organs. Inside the organs, there are tissues and the tissues are made of these cells. So these are basically the different cells in a tissue, for example. Now, the, the cells, they will basically consume the nutrients which are being supplied through this oxygenated blood. The cells will consume oxygen and other nutrients. And then the deoxygenated blood will return through the capillaries, through the venules, veins, and when a cava into the heart, the heart will pump the blood again into the lungs. It will get oxygenated and it will return to the heart and it will be pumped again. Now, what happens in the intracellular edema that it there is accumulation of excess fluid fluid inside the cell in extracellular edema there is collection of fluid outside the cell in the extracellular spaces in the intracellular intra basically inside the cells there is collection of excess fluid inside the cells now how the collection how the collection of excess fluid inside the cells occurs. Now, there are basically two conditions which can cause intracellular edema or there are basically two uh, causes of intracellular edema. First of all, first of all, the metabolic activities, the metabolic activities of the cells, it becomes depressed, depressed metabolism. So, the metabolic activities of the cells are depressed. Basically, every cell has some metabolic activities. They are, they are going on in different in uh, um, uh, different uh, uh, cell constituent like for example the organelles like mitochondria for example this is the powerhouse of the cell and there is generation of ATP etc. Now what happens is that normally normally there is sodium outside the cell sodium which normally drift in it drifts inside the cell. Once the sodium normally drifts in it comes inside the cell it basically brings water with it because because of osmosis. Now, what is osmosis? Osmosis, as we discussed previously in the last few lectures in detail, and basically this uh, this lecture is the clinical application of the osmosis, the things which we discussed in detail. Osmosis is basically the movement of water from a, from an area where, is there, where there is high concentration of water to area where there is low concentration of water through semi-permeable membrane. Or osmosis is basically the movement of water from an area where there is low concentration concentration of salute like sodium to area where there is high concentration of salute like for example sodium in this case. So normally metabolic activities will throw the sodium out. Metabolic activities will normally throw out the sodium outside with the help of sodium potassium pump and other activities and there will be no collection of excess fluid inside the cells. So if the metabolic activities of the cells are depressed, if there are depressed metabolic activities inside the cells, there will um, this sodium, uh, there will be uh, no force to throw out the sodium outside the cell. So the sodium will keep on entering, the sodium will keep on entering inside the cells and due to entry of sodium, the concentration of sodium inside the cells will increase. Concentration of sodium inside the cells will increase. It means the salute concentration inside the cells will increase and there will be decreased sodium outside. Similarly, the the water concentration outside will increase and there will be low concentration of water inside. So there will be movement of water from outside towards inside, which is basically osmosis. And this movement will occur across a semi-permeable membrane, which in this case is the cell membrane. So this basically satisfies all the definitions of osmosis. So basically due to decreased metabolic activities of the cell, now the decreased metabolic activities of the cells could be due to any cause. It can be due to a decreased supply of nutrients or there could be some a poisoning and any poison basically could depress the mitochondria or the nucleus or other uh, metabolic activities. So they can lead to basically the intracellular edema. Now this is basically the first cause of intracellular edema. The second cause of uh, intracellular edema is the decreased supply of nutrients. Now if somehow this artery or 
arterioles or veins they uh, they get blocked and there is not enough supply of nutrients to the cell this also will basically depress the metabolic activities so in case of any poisoning or uh, any toxins or any metabolic activity which any substance which basically depress the metabolic functions of the cells it can uh, it can lead to intracellular edema or if the metabolic activities are normal but the nutrients like oxygen etc are not not being supplied properly to the cells this also will lead to decreased energy and the cells again won't be able to throw out the sodium now again sodium will be entering the cells sodium will be entering the cells and because of lack of nutrients either due to blockage of the artery or due to some other conditions which will lead to decreased oxygen supply for example if there is hypoxia due to any reason and the cells cannot be properly supplied with the nutrients and there is lack of oxygen etc to the uh, you know, supply to the uh, to the cells then it these things again will lead to decreased metabolic activities sodium will keep on entering the cells and the, then the water will basically follow the water will basically follow the sodium and it will keep on coming inside the cells it will keep on accumulating inside the cells the cells will basically keep on swelling and it will again lead to intracellular edema and again there is basically role of osmosis which is basically movement of water from a region with there is where there is high concentration of water to a region where there is low concentration of water or from a region with low concentration of solute to region with high concentration of solute now these are two main causes of intracellular edema which is basically increased accumulation or excess fluid inside the cells now these are the conditions the decreased metabolic activity and the decreased supply of nutrients to the cells either of them can lead to uh, inability of the cells to throw out sodium and uh, um, the accumulation of sodium inside the cells and accumulation of water falling the sodium and it will lead to intracellular edema another cause another cause is inflammation now inflammation when occurs it also lead to a type of injury in which the cell membrane the cell membrane is permeable to sodium now again sodium keeps on entering inside the cells and following this entry of sodium due to osmosis water starts accumulating the inside the cells once again and this again lead to excess fluid accumulation inside the cells and this again leads to intracellular edema so to summarize this edema is basically the uh, excess fluid accumulation excess fluid accumulation it can be intracellular or extracellular edema intracellular edema is basically excess fluid inside the cells and the three main causes are decreased metabolic activities decreased supply of nutrients to the cells and inflammation all these conditions basically lead to increased entry of sodium or inability of the cells to throw out the excess sodium which normally has a tendency to enter and once the uh, sodium enters the cell there is entry of water as well following the uh, sodium due to a process that is known as osmosis thanks a lot for watching the video